Anyway, thanks for being here with us, uh, Steve. Welcome. It's a pleasure to interview you and meet you finally. I had prepared um, an interview with a lot of questions about your life, your career, especially in the mountains. And then after hearing your presentation yesterday here in uh, Brixen, I woke up and said, oh no, okay. Canceled everything and then um, <laughs> rewrote. Uh, because last night, instead of talking about your accomplishments in, uh, in the mountains, it sounded a little bit like you were saying goodbye or at least closing a really important chapter of your life. Yeah, I would not saying goodbye, but definitely uh, saying closing a, a chapter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but at the end of the presentation, there's like a sadness in the air. Is that kind of how you feel? Hmm. I think when you say goodbye, you feel sad. Yeah. If it's been a good period, so... Um, it was difficult for me to sense anything from the audience last night, honestly, because my own emotions were quite strong. Yeah. So it was hard to receive also, you know, the feeling from the audience. I think I had a, the impression that the, a lot of people were kind of stunned by how open you were about your yeah. personal life, family, um, uh, close friends, and also, you know, thinking about getting married and having children, especially um, in your book, you talk about you question if you will ever trust or commit to a wife or a woman mm -hmm. the same way you would trust and commit to a, a, a climbing partner. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the book you just you know published last year. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. what happened? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> took a big fall. And oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it unusual to kind of open yourself up to just you know a bunch of strangers? Oh yeah. In the end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a sense, it's a bunch of strangers, but in a sense, it's also my family, part of, part of my family. You know, it's the mountain community. Um, and maybe not every single person in the room I would consider to be cl close or open to like that, but as a group, like, yeah, that's, that's my people. It's, <laughs> so your, pe it's your peeps. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who knows you, knows about you know the horrific, horrific accidents you had on uh, Mount Temple in Canada. You were training to open a new route on, um, on K2. Do you believe that th that fall, that accident was destiny? Like there was a reason that was supposed to happen or was it kind of, did you think philosophically, hey, it is what it is? Or did you kind of analyze it practically? Hmm. Or all of this, the well, above? I'll start by saying I'm not a big, I'm not a big subscriber to destiny. Mm. So that never crossed my mind, honestly. Um, you know, I stood on a piece of rock that wasn't strong enough to support 72 kilos or whatever, so, uh, and I fell off. Uh, you know, it's, there's probably been a lot of situations where I was very close to the same result. Yeah. If I think back to all of the climbs I did over my life, so, Okay, it happened, and I don't I don't know that it happened for a reason, um, but it certainly it certainly happened, and it certainly is real. And um, here I am. Yeah. So, time to go on from here. Mentioning the climbs in the past, I mean, your choices of routes are, were often you know death defying, whereas a false step could bring you, as happened, you know, facing uh, death. What brings a person to put himself in a situation like that? Like which one? Death-defying exactly. situations. I mean, do you think of it that way or is it just... I don't uh, think of it that way. Um, I think that the... I don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to think I'll defy death today. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like evil Knievel or something. Right. <laughs> They're not stunts in that way. You know, I think that the roots I do or have done or that we do as climbers are expressions of what we already know we can do yeah sure there's there's bad luck and i've lost a lot of friends to bad luck and mm -hmm. i've lost a lot of my you know the last year of my life to bad luck but uh luck or notwithstanding uh, i don't think that you can think of roots uh, as um, as events 
Yeah. You know, the ha there are actually things that unfold because of somebody's physical and mental skill, and then they reveal themselves. They're, they're already true. You just show the world that it's true. That's a wonderful way of putting it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we know you haven't completely recuperated yet. You said last night the doctors said it could take um, about a year. Psychologically, it could take even longer. Is it perhaps the fear of not being as strong or as good as you were before the accident that's kind of making you say, well, maybe I won't be doing this tomorrow. I'm be climbing a different way. Maybe I'll dedicate myself to something else. It seems like you're being very cautious about saying what your mountaineering plans are for the future. Does fear have to do with that? not being the same as before? I'm sure there's a component of fear, yeah. Um, I think more than that though, it's uh, a bit of realism. Um, it's realizing that, uh, you know, the, the overall priorities in my life are shifting a little bit. Yeah. And climbing will still be important, but for example, when I climbed in 2004 that year, I did some of the best ascents of my life, but. I also realized, looking back, that was the only thing that was important, was climbing. I didn't do anything else. I didn't think about anything else. I wasn't motivated for anything else. It didn't have to do with me climbing the next hardest thing. Then like, I didn't care about it. You were obsessed. I was completely focused, focused and on one goal. Yeah. And that was a, that was a period, um, but I'm in a different period now. Yeah. How do you feel speaking of the accident? How do you feel physically? Uh, you know, I mean, it's seven months after, and even sitting here now, my, my right side hurts. Uh, the ribs hurt a lot. Uh, they hurt at night when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, and my right leg isn't as strong, but it doesn't hurt. It's just the nerve damage doesn't allow the contraction of the muscles in the same way. And then uh, I would say the, the biggest effect is just my overall energy level isn't as high. I yeah. think my body's still working quite hard to heal. Yeah. You know? And so it's, it's always, there's a, a drain on the battery always going back to the injuries. And I, I, uh, I get to the end of the day and I feel really tired. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I'm hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Which yeah. is good now that I'm at least sometimes You forgetting. don't think about it all the time. I don't time, think about yeah. it all the time. There's, yeah. Quite a, quite a few months where it was the only thing I could think about. I know for a fact that a professional athlete feels lost if he's not in control of his body, something that he's trusted for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that a little bit, a little bit lost, with your body not being how it was before? Mm. Yeah, I don't know that I ever felt lost. I think I felt more scared that it wouldn't come back, but I was, I knew, you know, it was cut off very quickly. So yeah. the day, the morning I woke up that I, before the accident, I felt great. Like I felt, while I was climbing, I felt really strong, as strong as I've ever been. So I went from that to, you know, here, way down to here yeah. in about one second. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I never felt lost because I, I, I have the reference point still, I know. I hope at least that it will come back and I'm optimistic that it will. I could be like, you know, the Michael Jordan situation where he went through a tragedy and then uh, existential crisis, you could call it, he stopped playing basketball, went to play baseball and then went back to his, his true love, basketball, and was more uh, stronger and more determined than before. Mm -hmm. So that could, I mean, that could easily happen to you, uh, mm -hmm. if you when you decide to go back to high level yeah, climbing. Yeah, I'll huh? be going... I'll be climbing again, there's no question. I'll always be an alpinist. It's just how that, what truth will reveal itself next time I go climbing. But you're open to whatever yeah, yeah. happens. You're gonna take it. I mean, you're gonna cross that bridge when you get to it. You can't do anything but cross okay. it when you come to it. Because last night, like, I think a lot of us had this impression that you were almost making a decision. Like you're halfway between what happened and getting well. And all of a sudden it seemed like, oh my God, you know. He's gone. <laughs> hmm, really? Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't mean to give that impression, I don't think. Okay, good. Happy <laughs> to hear that.